Sometimes when we have equations that are set up in certain formulas, we don't necessarily need to solve for the variable that's already isolated. We need to solve for a different one. So we have to know how to manipulate an equation to solve for a different unknown than maybe the original equation is showing. So what we need to do is using the addition and multiplication principles, we basically apply the opposite operations in order to solve for the variable that's indicated. So if we start here, if I have 5 is the result of a minus 3. So some number minus 3 is 5. Now we can maybe, maybe mentally figure that out, but we also have just the algebraic process of the addition principle to be able to figure this out. So I need to solve for a. That means I need a all by itself. Well, what number is in the way of that? A negative 3. Well, how do I zero out a negative 3? I have to do the opposite operation. I have to add it then to itself, which then lets me zero it out on the right side there. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So 3 gets added to both sides. Then it's very important that I simplify my final answer. I don't just leave it as 5 plus 3 because I know what that value is. It's 8. So this equation can get rewritten as a equals 8. Now over here, the indicated variable that they want us to solve for is a instead of the one that it's originally set, which is c. So again, what is in the way of a being by itself? This negative b. So I do the opposite operation and I add it to both sides. So a equals c plus b. Now here, we have negative 2 being multiplied by x. I need that negative 2 off the x, so I have to do the inverse operation. I have to divide both sides by negative 2. And when that happens, negative 2 divided by negative 2, anything divided by itself, is 1. Well, if I have 1, x means I just have an x. So then I have to divide negative 2 on both sides. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. I, R equals V. We need to solve for R instead. Since I is supposed to multiply by R, it means I need to divide both sides by I. So R equals V over I. Here I have X being divided by 5. To clear that 5 off of there, I have to do the opposite operation, which is multiply by 5. Those fives cancel out on the left, so I'm left with x equals 15. So that's our first half. So on our next one, we want to be solving for a. To get the l off the side with the a, we multiply that on both sides. a, which cancels that, a equals w l. And because w was already there first and l was coming to multiply it, technically it should then, the l should go second. But if you put it l, w, w, l, it really, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, so now we have a situation where we have multiplication and addition. When it comes to isolating a variable, we basically work PEMDAS backwards, and so I call it sad map. We have to add and subtract before we worry about multiplying and dividing. So I look at, well, I need to solve for x. Well, what, what is sharing the side of the x that I need to get rid of first? Anything not touching the x needs to get rid of first. So if I have a plus 3, I need to subtract 3. So that gives me 7x equals 10 minus 3, which is 7. And then I have a situation of multiplication, so then I can apply division to get x equals 1. Again, multiplication and addition, I'm needing to solve for x, so I get I clear off any number not touching the x term first before I worry about separating the x term itself. So I take away c, take away c, that goes away. So then I have to, to get the a off of the x, I have to divide both sides by a so that this side is just left with an x, and I have r minus c over a. Here, I need to get the 15 off of this side of the x term, so I have to subtract it. 13 minus 15 is negative 2. Negative 2 equals negative 4x. I divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, so I'm left with x. Well, negative 2, negative 2 divided by negative 4, a negative divided by a negative is positive, so I can drop my negative signs. 
And 4 can't evenly divide into 2, but I can simplify 2 over 4 into 1 half. This is very important when you're dealing with these equations. Simplify them as small as they can get. Don't leave some process undone. Take it as far as you can until you're given a variable value to plug in for the variable or something, but in this case, we're able to just solve for x. Now I need to solve for p, so I have to get the w off of there. Because it's a positive w, I have to subtract it from both sides, which leaves me with 2h minus w equals negative 3p. And now I have to divide both sides by negative 3. So p equals... 2h minus w over negative 3. And then on this last one, the last process, if I was solving this, would be to divide the top by the bottom. So guess what we have to do first? We have to multiply what's on the bottom to clear out the fraction. So I multiply by r squared, multiply by r squared. So that gives me f r squared equals big G, little uh, big M, little m. And on this one, I need to solve for g. So what's sharing the side of the g? m and m. Since they're all together, it means they're supposed to be multiplying together. So I have to do the opposite operation and divide both sides by big M, little m. So g equals f r squared over big M, little m. And that's how we simplify it. Just make sure you take it as far as you possibly can. Simplify, reduce, and just you, you work the equations backwards to isolate for the given variable that it's asking for.